This is the LD6 or Little Dude 6. It's a lightweight, portable carbon fiber mast for ham radio operations such as parks on the air, summits on the air, and ordinary field ops requiring some sort of wire antenna. Over the past year, we've determined the Little Dude 6 is not only reliable, but it's compact. But, ladies and gentlemen, the LD6 just got an upgrade. This is the LD6 version 2, and I want to discuss it during these next five or so minutes. And today I will be comparing these two masts, explaining the differences, talking a little bit about the POTA 20, and really, really just kind of pointing out why this might be the best portable ham radio mast on the market. So let's hit the basics first. Both of these masts have 20 sections. They're carbon fiber mast, they're collapsible to about 16 inches, and they both have roughly the same weight, right around one pound. There was a few issues with the version one that I'd like to discuss, and the first main one I wanna talk about is the overall length. Now it's called the Little Dude 6, and the six should stand for six meters. The Little Dude 6 version one, if you will, was around 5.6 or 5.7 meters in overall extended length. We'll get to that in a minute and why, but the LD6 version 2 is a very consistent 5.9 meters or 19 feet 6 inches. Big upgrade number one, more consistency. But there was something I didn't like about the Little Dude 6 version 1, and it was probably fine, and I made the same observation about something like the, well, the POTA 20. And that is, each section has a cutoff that's straight down. You'll see it here on the Little Dude 6 as well. And I thought to myself, is this the most optimal way to have a ham radio mast? So on the Little Dude 6 version 2, you can now see that each section has a flare in to the next section. And this has proved to be very reliable for wired portable ham radio operations. It's a small change that makes a big difference because these flares, they help with each section seating tighter. They reduce wobble and they resist slipping during something like extension or wind. At least that's my thought process on it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And just a hint for you, when you're going to collapse your mast if you need to, turn both the sections opposite ways, and then you could reduce and close your mast. Now, perhaps you might be already putting two and two together, and let's just get this POTA 20 out of here. When we're discussing the version one and the version two, and I talk about how they're the same length, the same weight, they even have the same diameters on the bottom section, which means that you could fit your accessories like the Little Dude 6, Dude Spike 2.0, inside either of these masts. If you upgrade to this mast, you won't lose or have to buy another spike kit. They'll fit. And that's a very nice thing to know. Well, one thing I do want to note out there is if you're purchasing this mast and you want a spike kit, you have to make sure to buy the Dude Spike 2.0. The POTA 20 spike will not fit with the LD6. It'll be too small. Now, there is one other huge difference. Well, two other huge differences. And the, the huge difference that you're going to care about happens to do with the caps on the top sections and the really the top sections themselves. So to get started, this is the Little Dude 6 version 1 with the corrosive handwriting or the Mr. Beast handwriting, if you will. And the mast upper section tip is about five millimeters roughly, whereas with the version two, you could see we got thicker and thicker is better. And it's about 5.5 millimeters. So we have a slightly thicker top section, which is really nice. But my favorite thing is the version one cap, it was plastic. And plastic is fine, it worked well enough but upon doing more and more research, I'm able to print something called TPU here at the office. 
you might actually hear the printers right now. And TPU is a wonderful material that's flexible. See, the story goes, and if you care, somebody needed a boat part recently, and I made it in ASA filament, much like you see here. And the first time they were out boating, they tapped on something like a buoy, and it broke the ASA. Plastic. It's a hard plastic with no flex. While redesigning the part and reprinting the part, I used TPU, and it works great because, well, TPU is just a durable, strong material, and it was suggested to me, why don't you use TPU for the top part? I think it's a great suggestion, and not only does TPU work really well, it doesn't break, I feel like it does a way better job hugging the top section. So, for example, if you're putting in a new cap or you need to take off a cap, all you do is you hold the top section securely, like you see me doing right now, and then you take the cap on and you lightly press it in, and you'll feel it press in. Now, when this cap goes into the mast, I believe it holds on a lot better. To get it off, I used to say pull the string, and I don't recommend doing that anymore. If you pull the string, you're gonna create instability while you're opening your mast and you're possibly gonna break the top section. Instead, what you'll wanna do is just take the top cap and pull it off now because this is soft material. It also doesn't do any damage to the top of the bottom section of the mast. Now I wanna point out one more thing, although I keep saying that, and the one thing I really wanna point out at this point is, with all my new manufacturing, which was done because the old manufacturer had a lot of inconsistencies in their ability to make these masts. Out of the last ones that I had, somewhere around 100 plus of them had some sort of defect. I had to sell them as factory seconds or B stocks or just not sell them at all. And that's a lot of money for me to be out. Version two, I got a different mold. I got a different manufacturer. They're doing a way better job. We're communicating every day, constantly thinking of ways to do upgrades. And yes, we are working on a little dude 10, which if you can guess will be a 33 or maybe even 34 foot mast that's portable and carbon fiber. But perhaps the coolest thing that happened with the new manufacturer is we got more consistency and we kept the price right around the same price as we were paying for the version one. So the version one might've been 69 or so dollars the version two is right now at $73.42. And I want you to think about that for a moment. You could buy a Little Dude 6 version two. You could buy the spike kit when they're back in stock. And you could pay for shipping. You could still be under $100, whereas currently, as I make this video, the POTA 20 is $129. So anyway, I've been doing a lot of work with the LD6. The process, because I charge so little, does take a little bit longer for me to come out with new products. Many people will ask, are you gonna come out with this? Are you gonna come out with that? And I'm currently focused on doing my best for one product at a time. We'll get to the next product down the road. Like I mentioned, there is an LD10 on the way, at least for testing purposes, but that might be six to 10 months out. So drop a, a comment below, which mast are you running? Are you running an LD6? Are you running a POTA 20, POTA 33? All of them. Are either of these masts helping you out? And more importantly, toss out a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I want you to understand that I do truly believe that making these videos and making products and keeping them inexpensive is something I can continue to do with the community support. And with that, thanks for watching the channel. Wish you a good one, 73.